Hi everybody, I'm Yolanda Vasquez and welcome to Direct Connection. They say diamonds are a girl's best friend, but I'm pretty sure this funky, affordable meal that can be enjoyed in the comfort of your own home. Since most people have never been this close to a Lamborghini Gallardo, much if you are in need of a little help with some home improvement projects, we've got the perfect place for you right here on... Hi everybody, I'm Yolanda Vasquez and welcome to Direct Connection. Jeff Salkin is off tonight. In the studio for the full program to talk about major legislation passing Congress is Maryland Senator Ben Cardin. Thank you so much for joining us in the studio tonight. I think we just got to do a better job in informing the public of what immigration reform is about. You were it's saying if you do a better job of informing the I public, so. they probably would be more supportive. I, I think most Americans agree that our borders should mean something. As last week, President Obama signed into law one of the strongest pieces of financial reform legislation since the Great Depression. How do you think this will benefit Americans and will it strengthen our economy in the end? Oh, I think so. I'm very proud of that bill. It finally puts the really uh, uh, controls on the reckless gambling on Wall Street. Let's move over quickly if we can over to health care reform. Um, a huge proponent of health care reform and uh, I'm sure was very pleased when President Obama right. signed it into legislation back in March. How will this benefit Americans in terms of the quality of health care and the cost of health care? Well, Yolanda, uh, last year this time I was involved in these town hall meetings. <laughs> yes, I think you, you remember. <laughs> and we, had a, we had some angry people. But it made for people, great television, I tell it, you. <laughs> it, it did. It, it was a long, hot summer, but it was, a, I think, a very interesting time. Well, Senator Ben Carnot, it is always a pleasure to have you here in our studio. Lots of great questions from our callers, and we'll invite you back again if you'll come. Absolutely. And now you can watch complete episodes of our programs at video.mpt.tv. Now for all of us at MPT, I'm Yolanda Vasquez. Thanks for watching, and have a wonderful Monday night. Good evening and welcome to Your Money in Business. I'm Yolanda Vasquez. On tonight's program, breaking down executive pay. How much is too much? Jeff Salkin finds out in our Smith Biz segment, plus the impact of Maryland parks on the state's economy. But up first, a Baltimore company is taking on a popular social networking site. In the studio now is Jason Hardebeck, founder of Hooglu. Jason, pleasure to have you in the studio. Thank you for having me. So your company recently filed a lawsuit against Facebook for patent infringement. Mm -hmm. What does the lawsuit allege and what is the patent for? Well, the lawsuit alleges that Facebook is using uh, a patent that is owned by Hooglu uh, without uh, proper compensation. Essentially, the idea is that you are able to control who can see your information based on how well you know somebody or how much you trust them. So are you alleging that this technology that you've developed and or have a patent for is the mm -hmm. same exact one that Facebook currently uses for its, what, 300 million users worldwide? That is what the, the lawsuit states, yes. And it's not a similar technology? It's the exact technology? I mean, is this maybe just a horse of a different color or is it something bigger than that? Well, you, the patent is actually describing a system and a process. As you well know, Facebook says it sees no merit in the mm -hmm. case and that they plan on fighting you vigorously. What's your response to that? Well, I wouldn't expect them to say anything else. <laughs> And this week, MPT and PBS are airing the National Park's America's Best Idea. The 12-hour Ken Burns series continues Thursday night after Your Money in Business. But right now, we find out how Maryland parks are helping the state's economy. Our Lou Davis has the story. And that's our program. Tune in every Thursday at this time for Your Money in Business. Tomorrow on State Circle, the week in Maryland politics. Now for all of us at MPT, I'm Yolanda Vasquez. Thanks for watching and have a good night. And joining us now to talk about her new book, Cooking with Grease, is the former campaign manager for the 2000 Gore Lieberman ticket, Miss Donna Brazil. Donna, it's an absolute pleasure to meet with you. Thank you, and thank you for reading the book. It's been a good read so far, and people should definitely take a look at it. You talk a lot about politics, and in your role as the former campaign manager, you're the first African American to hold such a highly regarded position. What were some of the misperceptions people had about you? I think it, it was a very unique position at a unique time in American history to have a woman of color lead a presidential campaign. I tried to lead by example. I tried to open new doors, break the glass ceiling, and at times I broke more than a glass ceiling. So I had a, a rough and tumble, but in the end I came out okay. You started your political activism at such an early age, around eight or nine years old, I think you got involved in a local campaign, but you were also doing that at a time that was uh, very volatile in America's history. How did growing up in the South at that time shape your political views to this day? I came of age during the tail end of the Civil Rights Movement and Martin Luther King was assassinated and I felt that as a little girl that I wanted to do my part, I wanted to do my part 
to keep the fire of freedom burning in the in the country. And so I wanted to join the civil rights movement and I got involved in politics instead. Another procedure that you're well known for is the hemispherectomy, which is where you remove half the brain and this I'd imagine is to either stop and or control seizures. Right. How does the brain still function with only half of it intact? Well, interestingly enough, in an immature brain, there's a phenomenon known as plasticity, which means that some of the neurons that are left behind have the ability to take on new functions. I mean, the human brain is so fascinating. There's still so much that we have yet to learn. Is it still somewhat of an enigma to you? Well, it certainly is the thing that intrigued me and, and brought me into the field of neuroscience because I realized even as a relatively young person that we didn't know very much about the brain. One of the other big issues that's uh, important to you has to do with health care, and you say that it's incredibly frustrating. We're talking about 47 million Americans who are uninsured, and let's not even begin to talk about the people who are underinsured. What do you think are some of the major concerns with this issue? Okay. Well, there, there are a number of huge concerns. Uh, first of all, recognize that as a nation, we spend more than twice as much per capita on health care as the next closest nation in the world. Mm. And yet we rank number 37 in terms of health care. When it's all said and done, what do you want them to say and to be written about Ben Carson in the history books? You know, I would like at the end for people to say his life inspired others and helped them to recognize that the person who had the most to do with what happened to them was them. Thank you, Dr. Ben Carson. It was a pleasure speaking with you. My pleasure. It's the kind of high... It's an easy and quick way to get money. ...that triggers a depressing low. I would find myself getting sick at the toilet. It was just because I knew the game was going off in like five minutes. For nearly two decades, nothing could keep Michael Osborne from the thing he loved most. A good game with a winning wager. I'd bet on football, I'd bet on hockey, basketball, pro and college sports. Osborne says his compulsive gambling started at the age of 15 when he met a local bookie. Five years later, he was taking other people's bets. I had six TVs in my living room and three satellite dishes on my roof. It was like a mini ESPN zone. And I would have 50 people over to watch these games, people that would be betting through me as well. His penchant for sports betting spiraled out of control when Osborne became a real estate agent and started stealing money from his clients' escrow accounts. In an addiction where your drug of choice is money, I, I set myself up very well to have unlimited access to it. Unfortunately, it just wasn't always my money. Charged with theft by scheme, Osborne spent 17 months in jail, shortly after he tried to commit suicide by stepping in front of a train. I had a whole conversation in my head that if I did this, I was going to go to hell and all this stuff. But I, you know, I even conversated back that that's okay because hell will be better than what I'm living today. With the help of his wife, Osborne sought treatment at Harbor Point, a residential facility dedicated to treating compulsive gamblers. He kicked the habit and in an ironic twist of fate, any messages? Became executive Major director Mike, of the center, did. sharing his life story with other addicts. I can tell that gambler, you know what, I know where you've been, I know where you're at, and I can, if you give me 10 more minutes, I can tell you where you're going. He worries slots will only worsen the problem. Everyone's so gung-ho of let's just get the slots here, and then we'll fix everything else. Well, it's proven in other areas, it doesn't work like that. You need to be prepared for what you're bringing in. Gambling free for five years, Osborne is sometimes tempted to place a bet, but he hasn't. His sole focus now is to help those still struggling with this debilitating disease. Try to educate the public to get rid of the stigma of public ignorance that it's all oh, it's just harmless fun. You're right, for 93% of the country it is, but for 7%, you know, it's a living hell. It's become an all too familiar sight on the road these days. Distracted drivers exchanging electronic messages while operating a vehicle. I see texting more often nowadays. 17-year-old Joseph Biondo says he knows texting while driving is not a safe thing to do. It distracts your eye from the road. You pay less attention to what's going on around you. But he does it anyway, and his best buddy Joe Reed is a text messaging fiend. And he thinks he's found a way to master the message swapping while driving. I usually have the um, phone next to the steering wheel. And I can see the steering wheel, and then I look up, and I see the road. So I don't think it's that hard. According to a recent survey by Nationwide Mutual Insurance, nearly one in five drivers, ages 18 to 60, admit to text messaging behind the wheel. 
Statistics show this new type of driving behavior is particularly common among teens and young adults. It's really just become part of their, uh, their daily, their hourly, their minute by minute routine and unfortunately too many of them uh, maintain that routine even when they're behind the wheel of a car. Stephen Wallace, chairman and CEO of the National Youth Education Organization, SAD, says his group is already familiar with the problem. Well, what young people tell me is that they know they shouldn't be doing it, they know it's dangerous, and they know it's much more dangerous even than talking on a cell phone. I sat down with members of the Massachusetts SAD Student Advisory Board to talk with them about this dangerous driver distraction. Texting is still fairly new, so the more popular it becomes, the more people are probably going to be doing it while driving, unfortunately. Well, I think a lot of it is the impulse, and you think that, oh, it's a fast text, I'll be able to do it, uh, but those few seconds can be really dangerous. For me, at least, it's like a common sense thing, like it's not safe to be not looking at the road while you're driving. Reports of accidents in which text messaging was a factor has some state lawmakers thinking legislation is the answer. But frankly, I think those types of laws are very hard to enforce. I'd probably still text, <laughs> yeah. Uh, I think a lot of people would still text. My true love has always been cars. And at the age of 43, Jay Blake is living the dream. You guys ready? Yeah. The shoot's off! Yeah. Slow! He's the owner and pit crew chief of a professional drag racing team. With major wins in the NHRA's top alcohol funny car class. We've finished as high as eighth in the world. We have won some of the biggest races in the country. A remarkable feat considering the man who oversees this team and most of the car's mechanical work is completely blind. May 22nd, 1997, 5.30 in the afternoon, I had a forklift wheel and tire assembly explode in my face. Blake was flown to a local hospital where doctors worked for hours to rebuild his face and save his life. After my accident, my whole world had changed. I had no idea what I was going to do with the rest of my life. The loss of his sight cost Blake a successful career as an auto tech, but it gave him a new vision for the future. I had absolutely nothing to lose. I had plenty of time on my hands and I was just gonna go for it. I was gonna follow my dream. Against all odds, he started his own race team. Blake had to learn how to fundraise, solicit sponsors, build a team. He also wanted to work on the car. Can you tell if these are all new plugs or if they've been run? I think they're all new. They are. As crew chief, Blake does everything from changing out spark plugs yeah. to leaking the motor. Open it. He says he uses his hands to see. Through touch, I build a picture in my mind of what I'm working on. He also uses this device called Braille and Speak. These six dots right here make up a Braille cell. To write down and retrieve contact information. Motor Week Television. Motor Week Television. <laughs> you love the best quiz. Yep. And then your home number. No. Yeah, we don't want to play that. <laughs> Blake moves around the pit area without a walking stick. He may stumble at times, but like life, he knows how to get around things. I'm with Jay so much that I don't, a lot of times I forget he's blind. When he's not in the pit, Blake travels the country as a motivational speaker. His life story profiled on Network News. Call it blind ambition, a remarkable race driver. Blake uses the opportunity to encourage others to pursue their passions. And what do you tell them? What I try and tell people is they don't have to get hit in the head as hard as I did to wake up and go for it. A simple message backed by the indomitable spirit of a man who knows what it takes to follow a dream. We all have stuff in life that we have to deal with. And if you deal with it with a positive attitude, it won't stop you.